against the wall Now you know you never had a chance Should've known better Now you better make other players There's no going back Gotta let you know in advance This is Yam Squad It's the Team Team Avalanche This is Yam Squad It's the Team Team Avalanche This is Yam Squad It's the Team Team Avalanche There's no going back Gotta let you know in advance This is Yam Squad It's the Team Team What's good, YouTube? Your boy Joe Grizz here, back with another exciting video. This time, my nigga Tito Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, welcome back. Welcome back. I've done a video with you in a while, but this time we're gonna profile his uh, first place windup deck from the Scarsdale tournament that just passes Sunday. Pretty good. Uh, what makes you play windups, bro? I got tired of losing to Fossil Dino. I mean, yeah, I, res I respect it. I was you, playing you. Heretics before this deck, and although Windups is I, by far not a better deck than Heretics, <laughs> but I just didn't feel like losing to these good side deck cards that they had. Like, I wanted to play a deck that not many people were going to expect. Like, throughout the whole entire event, people were telling me, oh, people didn't believe that I was playing Windups. And the people that I played against didn't know what to do against the deck. Like, game ones and games twos, because they didn't know what to side and they didn't know how to play against it. And my playstyle was nothing like the, you know, regular wind up sham model combos. It was just, you know, patience and beat. But I, I, I really didn't want to play Heretics anymore, and this was the only deck I had accessible to me, so I was like, fuck it, I've been wanting to play Windows for a while, so let me just put it together and see how it does. And lo and behold, <laughs> it wins me a fucking excellent time, man. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and uh, 100 out of credit. And, and, no, 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 100 out of credit. 100 out of credit. It was still credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was quarter. Yeah. So, I mean, that's crazy. Wind ups, wind ups. I gotta see this shit. Like, so, you, gotta, you gotta show me this deck, man. I mean, it's, it's the it's basics. Shit. Like, it's. Shit blew my mind when I seen this match happen. And, like, you, and you beat Gear Gear in the finals. Yeah, I mean, I, I in, in top eight, statistically, I would have to go against three Gear Gear decks. And, but I, I got fortunate. I'm not gonna lie, I got fortunate. Shout out to Jarrell Winston. Because he, he had something to do, he left. So, I got paired up against him in top eight. And so I just got the free win. So shout out to him for you know not having to need to play another Yu-Gi-Oh match. But I had to play against um, Kenny from Toy Wiz in top four that was playing Gear Gears. And I had to play against Andrew Powell in the final. The Team Avalanche. That was also playing Gear Gears. So like, it was it was a pretty tough one. Um, so the deck list. Andrew. Is, <laughs> uh, welcome back, Andrew Paller. For real, that's what I was saying. Welcome um, back, Andrew. <laughs> so the monster lineup is pretty simple. It's all standard windup monsters. It's the trip windup rabbit. It's, it's by far the best windup monster. Well, most people are gonna say it's the second best windup rabbit, the second best windup monster in the deck. But it's my favorite windup monster in the deck, and it's my favorite windup monster. Period. What would the best be? Magician. Oh my god. I mean, it's at one for a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's three wind up rabbits, then you have the three wind up rats. Oh, that card's amazing. The three wind up sharks. The one magician. I chose to play one warrior because just like any other deck that has to play those cards, like the vanilla ish cards, you don't want to play multiples. Uh, like, I was debating whether playing one or two because drawing it is not that bad if you open up factories, but it has it, it combos with nothing but shark. And if you don't own the, if you don't open up factory and you open up like two of these, you're it's 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 gonna be slow for you. So it's just it's just like a, a win more card in the deck, and it's easy access to rank fours with one rat. Then it's I live by this religion. Card card D. Exactly. Johan Aguero, I'm not ever gonna stop playing this card because of you. <laughs> so it's two card card Ds, and the one card that everyone was was questioning is like, why do I play Redox? Is this monster I mean, why not? It's a 3,000 defense monster that if I need to summon it to keep me alive for another turn for my wind, for my wind up rat to come back off a rabbit, it does that. It's a monster reborn that I can pitch this dead one up warrior in my hand, or if I don't want to summon card card D, that monster reborn's wind up rat and gives me combos. And it also sets me up with lever your plays where I can just remove my wind up rats and remove car card card summon it, and then summon another like wind up rat, activate effect, make levier, bring out another wind up rat, make more monsters. And it, it just promotes too much goodness. Like why not play? It doesn't hurt you for playing it. It's in the words of Chris, a win more card. So like why not? It doesn't hurt the deck to play it. The spell lineup is probably the most crucial. Well, it's not the most crucial part of the deck, but it's it's the part of the deck that gets you there. It's the all in, all important wind up factory, most important card in the deck. Like this, if the games that you don't draw this card, if your opponent set up tempos, 
it's, it's going to be an uphill battle all game. Like, this equalizes any deck that uh, emits plus ones and stuff like that, like Bujins, Girgias, all these decks that out that outrace you with these pluses. This keeps you in the game versus those builds. And then um, it also, like, gets your combos off, like, Magician Shark isn't the same without another shark. This is essentially another shark. Mm -hmm. Then I play the Trip Upstar Goblins. It's a combo deck, so why not? I want to draw into the extra combo pieces. Mm -hmm. And the whole 37 card theory. I mean, oh no. It's, uh, you, can't, you can't sit there and say that it's, it's an awful theory. Like, even the people that don't believe in the whole 37 card deck theory, um, they probably still play Upstar Goblin for their own reasons. Like, there's, people have their own reasons for playing the card. I play the card because it gets me to my combo pieces faster. If I don't draw Wine of Factories, I don't win the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, it's that simple. Uh, trip MST. Mm. I, I, I'm a fond believer I'm not main decking this card. I like to side deck it because it's more of a like game two, game three responsive card. But there are cards that people main deck, like Kaiser Coliseum, that just wreck my face. Mm -hmm. There's Kaiser Coliseum, there's main deck skill drains, and like it's, it's just a whole bunch of main deck cards that I probably won't think of that I'll just get hit by, and it's like, damn, I can't do anything to that because my monsters don't pop back rows. So the MSTs are a bit needed in the main deck. And this card helped me win a lot of games. Like, I got this, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be 100% real with you guys. Um, another reason that made me play windups is because I've been a big fan of the deck since um, Shockmaster got banned. Because everybody was like, it's one of those decks that it's like people are not gonna play it now because their main combo pieces are no longer effective. But I think it's still an effective deck. And the only thing that made me real, uh, another thing that made me pick up the deck and want to play it was because my friend Shadow um, hit me up and he was like, yo, a wind up deck top at a certain event. And I was like, okay, cool, send me the list. So when I looked at the list, I was like, this list looks kind of terrible, but it's a skeleton nonetheless. We can work on it. So that's what I did. I hit the lab, I worked on it, and you know, I came up with a build. But the one card that, you know, that was in the build of the, of the, of the wind up deck at the top, that I, I kept in the build because I, I thought it made sense was Messenger of Peace. Like, it makes absolute perfect sense to play it in the main deck in this format because decks that want to OTK, although there's decks out there that have easy ways to get over like back rows and stuff to promote their OTKs faster. Against windups, 100% real, you're not gonna want to MST and Messenger of Peace because you want to make sure I don't have factors. But some people will waste their MSTs on Messenger of Peace to try to, like, you know, deal damage and leave my factories alone. So it's a win-win situation for me. Either they don't kill me because they leave the MST, I mean, they leave the Messenger of Peace, or they attempt to try to kill me and leave my factories and give me, you know, a chance to come back and win the game. So this card just makes perfect sense. Like, all monsters that are being summoned right now are, like, can't attack because of this card. Bushin Yamato can't declare an attack. All these hieratic monsters can't declare attacks. Gary Nexus can't declare attacks. Like, it's just it just promotes safety. And then the the staples it's Book of Moon, Dark Hole, and I main decked one part of the con. Like, this card is terrible, but as a one of, why not? Like, it's a mini Avarice, and like I can turn one, have it live for turn two, with any like. Magician Shark combo, any some summon wind up warrior shark combo, like any any two card uh, wind up combo into an exceed because all my exceeds are different types, like all of them. So it doesn't matter what exceed I, I exceed into, most likely it's going to be a different type from the monsters that I used. So it's it's a card that that like in a, in a tough situation, I don't have to I don't have to enter my battle phase. Like it's it's activated and establish a board presence that gets over my opponent's board pressures and just chill. It's like, broken because you can't connect the battle phase, but you can spam. Yeah, and, like, and, and you can put so much that, presence on board. Windups, that's what windups does so well. So this, like, with a windup factory on board, or even like if I activate this and join to car card D, I set back rows and summon car card D, and it's just like infinite pluses. Broken. And uh, so like it's 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 basically just a mixture of like smaller monsters. Well, I mean that's any Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, it's just a mixture of smaller monsters. Yeah. <laughs> but like. Majority. The, the the majority of the, the the reason the deck did so well is because its spell and monsters work so well together, and the extra deck just had answers to everything for days. And then there's also the trap cards that you know help answer you know certain problems in the format. Like 
I, I this I religiously believe in playing this card at three. Like it's, <laughs> it's amazing. Now this is the most question. I didn't even know it was in the deck until I saw you separating yeah, it. I mean, why the hell do you play people don't three believe. mind crush? I mean, I, I just keep giving shout outs to mad people, but I gotta give shout outs to Joel and John Reyes for this because. Like, um, John, JR was a believer in main deck mind crushes for mad formats. And Joel is probably the one that put him onto that idea, but I don't, it's, it's a he say, she say shit. But like, they legit like told me that this card is, it, it defines, it defines games game one. Cause like everything in this format searches. There's not one deck that one shape, one way, shape or form ends in a search like, Bujins have Yamato that obviously you know they're gonna have Crane if they don't if they if they dump like a turtle or something at end phase. You have all these tanky decks, you have all these decks that have rota ish type cards, like Heretics have Seal, um, um Fireface have tanky, like all these cards that revealed and all these decks that don't play cards like that play cards like Pot of Duality or you know, um just ran like salvages. All these cards that just give you card information that when they add cards to hand, you just call it. And the most important part about it is if you hit something, you play around your opponent's entire hand. Like the entire thing. Outside of what they already have on board, knowing what they what what knowing what to expect or knowing what they already have, because it's just information is just key. Like yeah, and it also promotes like this card. You can use it in a in a situation where you just need to take an educated guess so you won't lose the game. Like in the sense where you're you're in a perfect position of winning, and there's only like certain amount of cards that hurt you in the situation. Like this card promotes those cards not existing. Like having a magician shark combo and flipping it and calling effect veiler. You call it wrong, hope and pray he doesn't hit the magician or shark. That's that's like one of those hope and pray situations. But in a, in a in a sense that if he has it, now you just get to roll freely. Or like in in the sense of when you put a board presence. After the economy or something, and you're like, oh, if he has dark hole, I lose. Okay, so flip it. Call dark hole. If I'm wrong, I don't lose. If I'm right, I still don't lose. So like, it's it's a win-win situation whether you call it right or wrong. Like I'm never scared to flip this card, and like, I, even though sometimes I think about it, like I would just sit there and be like, oh, you know, what card really hurts me? Like it all, it all, like I still don't know how to play this card to its full extent in the main deck, but like sometimes you just have to sit there and think. Like when they MST it, that's free. Your factories don't get MST. And like it's just it's it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But the rest of the trap lineup is That was a uh, that was really religious thing he believes religiously. I, mean, I believe in main decking mind crushes now, I, I believe in the car cardies, I just believe in all of these cards and that's what got me to win. It's uh trip, the standard cards. Yeah, it's trip Phoenix Chains, it's double D prison, warning, bottomless, torrential, and trap stuff. Too good. Trap People were asking me why I don't play Mother Force. That card just doesn't resolve. Oh yeah, you don't, that's right. That's really Shout out awesome. to Jose Jones. It just it, it, it just doesn't Pro Jose yeah, Jones! It just doesn't resolve <laughs> ever. Like there's too many trap stands, there's too many seven tools, there's too many of, of everything. Like, I, and I get tired of losing to Garunix. Mirror Force does nothing to Garunix. Dead ass. Deep Prison solves Garunix. Absolutely solves it. Um, extra deck real quick. The extra deck is the MX Saber and Volker to combo off with the well, with the one wind area. The Levier to extend the new from play combo. Soul Silver Mountain. I mean, this card is... The only way I will not play this card is if I'm absolutely 100% positive about playing two Ghost Trick Alucard cards. But this card is great. Because if I have Factory, I just swing over a monster, get back a rabbit, and I'm chilling. The wind of Zen means you have to play it. It's a wind-up monster, why not? The one Ghost Trick Alucard. Broken. And then it's a uh, Photon Papla Operative. She's the one that promotes the Magician Shark combos, if you guys don't know. It's just Magician Shark into Rat, you exceed into her and then activate the Rat's Rat to get whichever one you want. If you have another Shark, then you probably get the Magician. If not, you just get the Rat, uh, the, the Shark and just make a combo. Uh, I actually like two one on I seen that shit putting the work it, that it, day. Like, yeah, I mean, there was, a, there was a game where my opponent had two Special Summon Monsters on board. I made two one-on-ones, took both his monsters, and I won the game because of that. Like, there's just certain decks out there that, like, they, they, they spam all these XEs and just say pass. But those XEs have additional effects when they when they leave or stuff like that. Like, Stardust, uh, Paladimo, uh, Girgen X, they all have these effects that when they leave the board, they get something else. Then I have uh, uh, one Diamond Direwolf, Heartland Drago, 
it's, <laughs> it's, it, I'm pretty sure it was meant for wind-ups because it has the freaking key in it and everything. But um, it's just it's just too good. Like it, if I need to like go for game, it's it's a card that I can just do that to go for game because they can't attack it and they can't attack me. Period. Oh, uh, yeah, good. Uh, Abyss Dwellers just for the lingering like um, Marmo players, and it also uh, it hurts Bujans a little, and it also Dragon. makes uh, with Shark it, be it comes out as a 22 beater if I need to like swing for game. Oh man. Um, the black ship of corn because I can't handle cards like fucking Gachi Gachi and, and Zen Main. Like those cards just need to leave so that I can like deal the rest of the damage. Uh, Tyrus is by far the best rank five. I, I apologize to Victor Santana. I was wrong. This card is amazing. Uh, Wind up Zen Mao, which is probably gonna change after artifacts come out, but it's just there for now. And Bulkus. Bulkus. Uh, now you don't play X tonight. No. You didn't have the exit tonight. I had one, borrowing one, but I didn't feel like I played it because the deck. I won this for my baby boy. Because <laughs> the deck goes two plus, so it's like I time I will never resolve. And Joel Clark. Hey now. <laughs> in the off situation where I need to access all night, I'm already losing that game anyway. So like, X Tana is not really gonna make a difference. But you didn't win one, so you wanna show yeah, that? I mean, I, I did win one. We'll show this real quick before this battery dies in this camera. Oh, that's what you're saying. I yeah. Thought you were running, I thought you were running out of time. No, no, I have unlimited time, but it's the battery. It's the battery. It's unlimited, but it's an extra time. Right? You still got 100, 100 store credit NX tonight, so that's pretty plus. I mean, 100 to get anything you want, plus this broken ass bad boy that you don't want to play. It's not that I don't want to play, it's just, it makes no sense to play. Well, it's good to have it for the next format because you're going to need this. Yo, I'm definitely going to need it. You need this. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I essentially I won it, not for me to use it and not to sell it. But it was it was all in in faith for a friend of mine because he's trying to play Yu-Gi-Oh and like he doesn't really know what to play and whatnot. So I'm trying to help him out and get him a Yu-Gi-Oh deck. And of course, the deck he chooses to play is Bujins. So oh like, man! I'm trying to help him out as much as I can. Like I got the entire main deck for him, and he's just missing like one Yamato and like a couple cards in the extra deck. But now that I have the extra on I don't have to spend that much money for him. So like I'm just trying to help him out. Uh, Respect that. I mean, I just believe in the game. Like, uh, this whole, like, uh, I'm, I'm a player before I'm a vendor. So whatever I have, if my friends need it, I'll let them use it. And, like, I, I just I just believe in promoting Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, uh, we need players. We don't need vendors. That ass. Like, it's all about competition, not about who has the most expensive cards or who's making the most money off the game. Like, you, guys, you guys forget that it's, it's a game. It's a children's card game. Not, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah, at the end of the day, we, we love it because we get to play it and get to have fun with it. Like, it's it's an ad plus that we make money with it. Like, you know, that's, that's not the reason why we play. Oh, just that. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I hope That's... that answers everyone's question as to what the build was. It does though. <laughs> so first place windups for the new format. Proving everybody wrong and why rogue decks can't compete. <laughs> Tito, thank you. And <laughs> so I'm, glad, a I'm glad you did good in the tournament, man. I was, you know, I was, it was surprising. Yeah, good. Once I got to the top eight, I was like, if I don't win, it's just gonna suck. Cause, like, the prizes are good and whatnot, but it's like you want the first place. And like once I made it into the cut, I was like, I need this first place. I hope that happens with my next YCS, because my last one was. Terrible. Yeah, and you, I'm saying like wind up. Like I was, I was expecting them. Like he's not even playing a. I mean, a lot of people. He's not playing a real deep. deck. Like, he's when, playing a deck that's not real. When but I walked, proving it's real. When I walked into <laughs> Steve's store, his first statement was, "What?" Are you playing for the tournament today? I told him wind ups. His response was, Are you kidding me? I'm like, No, I'm gonna play wind ups. He was like, All right, play me real quick. We have time. I sat down, started playing wind ups, and he was like, Wow, you're serious. I'm like, yes, I'm going to play wind ups. When you told me that shit, my mom was no blown. one believed me. I was like, You playing wind ups? He's like, Hansi yeah, looked at me, he was like, Oh, you're disgusting. Why are you playing this deck? I'm like, Because I want to play wind ups. Like, and you won with it. That shit is ridiculous. Like, I mean, there's no problem, but like, it's, it's, a, it's a deck that. I can't say I've always had love for it because when when fucking Zen Mighty was out and they were doing all these hunter loops and like OTK and people, I was like this deck is just stupid. But once once it like toned down and they went to like one mission and all that, I was like this deck. I mean, the deck is good. It's never been bad. But after it being hurt, it becomes one of those decks that people just don't think about. So I was like, hmm, okay, let's play a deck that people aren't gonna think about. And most Yu-Gi-Oh players don't know what the deck does. Like these uneducated Yu-Gi-Oh players about decks in the past. That's why I respect Stephen Harris for what he did when he went. He went to the tournament with Taladad. 
Shout yeah, out to YPFL for still playing decks that people don't think are gonna be relevant. Taladad, Infernities, and Windups. Let's go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Jones did too. Yeah, Infernities. Jones, Jones went there with Infernities. Crazy. I went with Windups and Steve went with Taladad. Like it was just we were just yeah. blast for the past century. Even though you know Jones is more of now because he can still play Infernities, but it was new format. He was playing Infernities with one barrier. Barrier. Like, Steve it's Harris playing his tell dad and you playing. It's all about faith, bro. It's all about faith. Like I should I should have walked him in there with some crazy shit. Uh, I definitely had faith. In that. <laughs> like I like before the tournament, I had play tested it for like a couple days. Like a week went by and I was like, oh, I think I'll play this for the for the beginning of the format. And look, I entered the first tournament with it. And look what happens. Broken. Faith first, yo. You gotta believe in your cards. And your cards will believe in you. <laughs> But once again, thank you, Tito, for blessing me with this amazing profile because it was too good. I mean, I'm all about information, boy. And as always, all the subscribers, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check the links below. Follow all the links. I won't even name them. Never forget I'm name them. It's Vine, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook group. Join, do everything. Add him on Facebook. Now nah, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> but good shit. <laughs> well, your boy Joe Grizz. Sign out. Same piece, you guys. Later.